Hello again, and welcome back to the uh, single page application with Parse. Um, in the last video, it went a little long. I try to keep the videos about 10 minutes, and that last one went to 20. Um, so I'd like to review some of the things that we talked about. There were essentially two big ideas. And the first idea was that we want to know when we're loading a particular page. And each of our pages is arranged in a div, and those divs are hidden and shown whenever we want to show a page. So when we look at the register page, then we're showing this div and we're hiding all the others. And when we show that div, we use this page show method, right? And so, you know, we hide everybody that is type or class page, and then we show the, the actual div that has this page ID as its ID name, right? So the page ID is the ID name for the, for the particular, you know, div, right? And then what we're doing is we're, we're also on that same element with the same ID, we're calling jQuery's trigger method, okay? And what trigger does is it sends out an event message. It says, hey, you know, this is an event that's occurring at this object. Okay, so this page ID, this is, a, is a, an element on the page, but it also counts as a jQuery object. And so it can emit a message for, for anything that is listening for, you know, messages from that object, okay? And the type of event that it's emitting is a page show event. And this is a custom event that I invented. And you can give this any name you like as long as you don't use one of the existing event names. So I picked a name that I, I don't think exists already. Sometimes they suggest um, on the jQuery site, they suggest you use the colon in here because they're, they're pretty sure no one's going to use a colon in the name. I use the dash. Um, I think it's going to be okay. So anyway, so this is going to, you know, send out this message, right? And to, in order to, to, to listen for the message, what we do is we register an event or a listener for the event, I should say, here. And so when the logout page, this is an element with the ID name logout, um, it's going to listen for page show events, right, using on. So on allows us to say, to assign to an object a listener. So essentially this function is our listener, and, it's, and when it hears the event page show from this object, then it's going to, you know, be executed and run all the code within its code block. Okay, so that's how the system works. So, um, you know, for example, you know, we've got, keep this in mind here, this is logout, ID logout. You know, when the uh, page ID up here is, you know, you know, logout, right? Then right here, this would be log out, and we would send a page show method message to anything that's registered to listen to that event name from this same element. If this was something else like register, then nothing happens, right? Unless we register another listener for this object. Okay. So so anyway, that you know the the idea there is you know on a, on a you know, on a more, you know, simple level without getting into the, you know, like how it's working, the mechanic is, you know, if you can just realize that um, all of our pages are going to send out an event message with this name, page show, and anytime we want to execute some code, when that page is being shown, then we can register an event with the particular page and then write a block of code for that. So anytime our page, you know, one of the pages is loaded, we might want to, you know, execute some JavaScript or do something with our JavaScript. And what I did is I made a, a logout page. So it says, you know, you're, you're logged out. But actually going to the logout page logs us out by executing the code here, and then it updates the status of our page to, you know, let us know that, that we're logged out, right? So anyway, so I hope that makes sense to everybody. Um, try it out. You know, you could register an event with another page. Let's let's do that here. So we've got another page called register. And maybe, you know, if we want this page to listen for an event, um, and it's listening for the page show event also, then we could say, you know, function here, event. And you can pass event you know, custom values to this event object, too. And I didn't do that here to keep things simple, but uh, that's possible also, right? So, um, and, you know, I don't really have anything that I want to do on the register page, at least not yet. 
And, uh, you know, so for right now, what I'll do is I'll just um, type in a log message here and say, you know, um, showing uh, register page exclamation point, right? So, so there we go, right? So let's test, let's give that a test. So I'll refresh here and um, refresh my page here. And you'll see when I go to the console, if I go to the garage sale page, nothing happens. If I go to the profile page, there's no message here. I go to log in, and no message. When I go to register though, it says showing the register page. So that executed my code, right? And if I go to the logout page, it says logout page, right? And we see that. Okay, so so anyway, I hope that makes sense. And uh, that's like a really powerful idea. Um, you should try and learn that, kind of practice with it. And we're going to do more with it. I'm going to make use of it when we get further into this project. I'm going to make a lot of use out of it, especially when we go to the garage sale page, because anytime we go to this page, I want to refresh my list of garage sales, right? Okay, so let's move on to our next our next bit, right? So you can see um, I've got the body tag here, and when I click on the, the register button, or actually the login button, and I log in with my special secret username here, you can see that as soon as I'm logged in, it adds the logged in class. So this was the other big idea from the last video. And the idea here is that um, we're going to use these class names on elements in our HTML. Essentially, I'm going to keep it simple and just put a class on the body tag because all of our elements that we see inside the browser window are children or descendants of the body tag. So if I put a class here, these guys can pick up on it and, and we can use that to determine the style. And you can see here when we're logged in, the uh, login and register buttons are not displayed. Okay, so how did, how did that work? Let's take another look at it. So um, when I go to the top of the page, you can see that I have this function here called, I'll put a little comment there, right? Okay. I have a function called check login status. So what this does is it uses parses parse.usercurrent to figure out who's logged in. Okay. So if, if someone is logged in, then this gives us the current user. And in this case, we're just checking to see if there is a current user. So if, if there is a current user, someone is logged in. And in that case, we're going, going to add a class to the body tag. So jQuery body add class logged in. Okay, so now the body tag will have the logged in class. If we call check login status and, and parse user current sh it returns a false value right then we know someone is not logged in the current person you know browsing the page is not logged in so we'd be down here at else and the body tag says you know jquery says select the body tag remove class logged in okay so simple right let's take a look so if i log out right now you'll see there's the logged in class and when i click log out you can see the class was removed right and if i log in again it will be added again, right? Now we're added, you know, we've added it a second time, right? So, um, so there you go, right? So, and, and then what does that do? Like, how does that hide the registration and the login buttons, right? Like that we can't, actually, I didn't go to the logout page for some reason. Oh, no, I guess because I logged in, duh, right? So, um, so anyway, so there's my register, login, logout, right? Um, you know what I should do is I should change it so that when you're logged in at the login page, when you submit, we actually go back to garage sale maybe. Well, we'll add that later. But uh, but anyway, when I'm here and I'm logged out, you know what I'd like to do is I'd like to hide the log out button, right? And then let's see, why does the login and, and register, you know, appear and disappear, right? Let's take a look. So we're just doing this with a class name. So the class name by itself doesn't hide or show anything. But our style sheet can use that class to, to hide and show stuff, right? So when I look at this right here, you can see it says, you know, body.logged in. So anytime the body tag has the logged in class, if we put a space here and then some selector after it, then this selector is, we're only applying a rule to this selector if this is true. So if the body has the logged in class, then, you know, anything that has class hide if logged in 
will be display none. So that's why when the body is logged in, the register and login buttons are missing because I added the class. Um, let's go back to our HTML here. I added the class hide if logged in to these items. Okay, these two links, right? So the login and register button. Okay, so actually, you know, when we're when we're logged in, we want the log out button to be hidden. Okay, so so what we're going to do is I'm going to give this guy a class name, and I'll say you know hide if not logged in. How about that, right? I know this, these class names are pretty long, but I want to make them really descriptive, right? We're not going to use them a lot, but uh, so we'll just have a couple of these, right? Hide if not logged in. Okay, so how do we work with that? So here's another idea that might be useful. Um, here what I'm going to do is I'm going to say body not. And this is a pseudo selector that says that the body tag is not in a particular, you know, state or status and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say logged in here so in this case this says that the body has the logged in class and this says the body does not have the logged in class okay and then what I'll do is I'll put hide if not logged in here and then I'll put display none okay so anything that has the class hide if not logged in will be display none, but only if the body tag does not have the logged in class. Okay. Oh wait, I put log lodged in. Let's make that two G's. And if I change the spelling here, I'll have to make sure that I, I go back over here and change the spelling too. So there we go, right? So now let's give that a give that a try. So here I am, um, I'll refresh. And you can see right now the body tag doesn't have the logged in class and the log out button is hidden and if we click log in and then I log in here test and test right and then I'll hit submit now you can see that we, the body tag does have the logged in class and the log out button is now visible but the register and login links are hidden okay so there's a couple new ideas for you um, uh, CSS pseudo class not and then the whole idea of trigger and on with custom events with jQuery. Okay, so I hope that maybe clarifies some of the things that we did in the last video, and uh, thanks for watching.